Okay, welcome back to the Investigative Journal on this November 9th, 2015 day in our calendar. And uh, I hope you're having a good evening. Uh, you can listen to my show every evening from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. That's on FirstAmendmentRadio.com. That's Pacific Time. Now, the last week or so, I've been talking about media deception in the um, alternative media as well as the mainstream media. And I'm in the process of sending out a press release. Uh, I've got a YouTube video on it regarding the Alamo ministry and how they've been targeted by an unfair media as well as uh, the Vatican-led New World Order for their stance both scripturally and secularly regarding the Vatican. Now, I'm, this is a daunting task. I've sent uh, compiling addresses of over 250 to 300, and as I keep compiling, I get even more. And uh, I'm going to send this out uh, piecemeal, uh, 50 next week, 50 the following week, and continue that. And I've decided to do it both uh, electronically and by hand to see if I get a response either way. And hopefully this will lead to some fair coverage regarding the Tony Alamo ministry because there's only been one side in the mainstream media and really only one side in most of the alternative media. Uh, so I'm going to see if I can get some response, whether it leads to me getting be able to publish some articles or an interview or even my own little um, show uh, covering the Alamo ministry and much more regarding the Vatican, then it would be a success. So I'll keep you posted on that. Uh, what I want to do today is I found a, someone sent me a video from a, a guy who calls himself Shield of the Sun, uh, and it's entitled Media Deception. So what I'm going to do is go back and forth. He's asking questions. I'm going to do some answering. Since I've been in the uh, mainstream and alternative media the better part of my life, I always choose the wrong profession. <laughs> well, maybe it is the right one, but they just go about things the wrong way. So let's start this video, and then I will interrupt and maybe try to answer these questions. Shield of the Sun video entitled Media Deception. This video will be talking about the tactics and the brainwashing and propaganda methods of the media. So what is the deceptions of the media? Well, that's pretty easy for me to answer. And let me do that by saying, how many do you want me to start with? One, a hundred, a thousand? A million the deception is basically they don't give you the truth and they cover it up and they do it for a reason it's a huge huge problem and to pinpoint a deception it's hard because you have to do suppositions because they don't give you the facts well we'll move on forward to understand what this video is about is to ask yourself some questions do you really think that the media tells the truth. Okay, no, but he's got to be a little more specific. There's a lot of different media. There's the mainstream media, there's television, radio, all of this stuff. There is fluff, uh, internet, tablo you know, internet and print tabloids. There's a whole bunch of things, and it's you can't lump it all together. And then, of course, there's the alternative media and many, many branches of that. So, let's get a little more specific. Do you really believe that the media has honorable, good, and fair integrity and professionalism when they report their stories and when they engage in their beliefs? Okay. Again, that question can't just be point-blank answered no. Because there are some journalists in the alternative, all to the alternative to the alternative, some people that have taken it upon themselves to get the message out, whether it be on the internet, whether it be through YouTube's, and there's a lot of people doing that. Now, back up a little bit. The bigger alternative stations, most of them have been corrupted. Now let's back up a little bit more. The mainstream media. There are some good people working there, and I've worked with them. And I've sat with them and we've discussed, reporters discussing stories going, God, why can't we get this in the newspapers? This is the, so many of them know the truth, but they're foiled 
because the editor or the publisher are the people you got to go after and are that station managers that's who that's who controls the purse strings the owners of these huge corporations and if you don't toe the line you're gone and i wonder how many good journalists get fired every day do you believe that the media truly cares about the families of americans and around the world okay again you think i, I think you're going to get my answer it's too general there are people that do care. Many people. I've, I've worked with them. There's just a block at one point where you can write a story like I did. And I send it over to the editor. It never gets published. It gets hidden. You get lied to. So there are a lot of people in the media who are taking the brunt for guys like you and others who criticize it. And in a sense, some of the guys in the media uh, are there for a good reason. they they're the ones that are really going to figure it out. Then they have an obligation, I think, to go and tell it wherever they can, whether they can do it one by one, two by two, three by three. Because what is a media? What about today if I go out and I talk to 10 people at a grocery store and tell them the truth? That's better than writing a story of lies to a million, isn't it? Does the media treat the issues of Christianity and the issues of the degradations of this world with honesty and fairness okay the mainstream of course not some do there's people there that have tried to do it they get fired now you move down to the alternative or people like me yes i do cover it fairly and there are people that do it but you got to look at it from that point of view you got to start talking about the separation between what is mainstream media, what is uh, the problem in mainstream, what's happened to the alternative media, and what's going on today in both areas. Do they really care at all is the question. Usually, most people think that the media may not be completely honest, but is a source of information that is more accurate than anything else that they'll see in this world. Again, when you have people out there covering for you, the idea that you can get complete accuracy is wrong. A story builds, and let me tell you, I've written many stories that changed over the years so that you, you build on one fact and you go to the other. Now, in a case like he's talking about, He's not giving credit to certain people who are working on this, and it's not an easy task. And so what you got to do is understand what the media is. Well, how? What are you talking about here? Well, the media has transpired into, there are people on the Internet that get more coverage than a local newspaper. Then people just turn off the mainstream news. Many do, because they realize they're not getting it. How can people trust anybody? The point is you can't. But... I believe, the main, understanding this, the mainstream media has a purpose. What is he going to say? I don't know because I didn't pre-screen this and I thought it'd be kind of fun just to do it off the cuff. But at this particular juncture, I would say this, that the lying in the mainstream media is needed. It's never going to change and you're the one that has to understand it. Then you can compare it to what you find out, to what you find out from others on the alternative that are talking a, a different story. So what you're doing is blending all these things together to get as close to the truth as you can. And then when you're dealing with stories, each one is kind of different. When you're dealing with stories about the Vatican-led New World Order, you're dealing with a group that is ultimately uh, the ultimate deceivers in the world. So you're never going to get all the facts. You have to make some. You have to look at the fruits of their work. The, basically who benefits in the end and then make some suppositions that your readers can then put together and say well yeah that makes more sense doesn't it yes of course we're gonna take a break and I I'm just gonna cut this off for a minute so we'll be uh, right back I got to uh, take a quick break here right back okay we're back I had to take a quick uh, a break there for something but uh, you, you get what I'm getting at. Well, let's get back and see what he has to say. Other people who are a lot more 
bright tend to see that the media is very much bought, used, and sold out to various global agendas and to various institutions and to various schools of thought that are very much about breaking away what they call old traditions and putting Christianity into that category. Could it be that a lot of people, most people, become too used to relying on the media for information or too used to understanding the tactics of the media? Could it be that people today just cannot, will not believe that the media brainwashes people? Okay, I agree with him on that. And of course, I'm going to preface it by saying we got to differentiate them when he says the word media. Okay, but not bad. That it distracts people and that it slanders Christians. Could it possibly be that more and more people are waking up to the fact that there could be something wrong with the way the media reports stories? Ever since 9-11, people have come to really understand that there's just something very wrong about the media. Well, one thing that is very good about it is that at least people are waking up. The Well, you know, he's optimistic. Waking up really isn't... I, I'm getting tired of that phrase, waking up. Uh, the phrase that we need to, to, to put in its place is understanding completely the story of your country, the story of uh, scripture, the story of the past of history, and understanding where the problem lies, who are the people that are causing it, and it basically what kind of system are they under. Now once you understand that, then the obligation really is on you to change and join the side of good. It isn't only Christians that are slandered. There are many, many groups that are by the, the mainstream, a lot of the mainstream media, who have an agenda. The important thing is to figure out the agenda of everyone in the media, whether it be alternative, alternative to alternative like myself, whether it be just the guy who makes YouTube videos and all of a sudden gets a good following, or uh, the people that actually work for people like the Washington Post and all those uh, traditional outlets. So it's bigger. It's a bigger job than uh, just waking up, because you may think you're awake and still asleep. Variety of bad things about it is that people have been brainwashed by the media for a very long time. So, to understand this, we have to look at how did the media come about. The thing about the media itself, the way people watch the media today, is that they commonly watch it on TV, and they commonly watch it on the numerous television shows that air news programs. If we look at how that particular genre started, we have to look at Hollywood, and we have to look at the United States government. We have to look at what was happening at the time when television was first brought about, and what news programs had turned into. One thing that people tend to forget is a word called yellow journalism. Yellow journalism is sensational journalism. It was a method used to inspire paranoia, fear, and outrage at an event that was actually fabricated and created. Okay, long, long ago when... Uh... I first started in journalism, in fact, in journalism school, when I was editor of my student paper, that phrase came up, yellow journalism, of course, sensationalize a story. But the point is, he's got to understand one thing. I don't know if he's ever worked in the media or not, 
But what is sensationalism? Now, I can, I can specifically talk about it if you give me a story. Now, here's, to, here's something that may, that's interesting. You can take a simple, let's, let's talk about a simple fire or a murder or a story that people want to hear in their community what happened. What happened down the street when I saw all that smoke? Now, you can have a journalist, take three journalists to go that cover that story. And you can take, I will bet you, here's the real deal when you're a writer as a journalist. You want people to read your story. You know that the most important thing must be put in the first paragraph because they do studies back in the days and probably on the internet's no different. People, certain amount of people only read the first paragraph. Then a certain amount of people only go so far and you write in what's called an inverted pyramid style. All the important things go on the top in the first few paragraphs and you filter your way down because you know most people are never going to get to your story. So sensationalism then you get a good journalist that can't write people don't want to they won't even read the first paragraph if you can't put it together sensationalism in this case I used to be a journalist that made the stories so readable that you know add a few really you know you're not sensationalizing what you're doing is writing well you're giving you not a dry approach to a story, but an approach where it's easy to read, where people get the information. Now, sensationalism or yellow journalism, that's when you're going over to the top. You know, when you hear the old stories about uh, Citizen Kane, you know, the story that was made about the Hearst Papers and all these kind of things and all the things they do to create the news, sensationalize, so people read their paper. Facts can be embellished. Uh, facts can be even distorted. And who wants that? So when you say yellow journalism, basically all you're saying is you don't want journalists to lie. You don't want you, but you want people to have good writing so they can read. Yellow journalism also embellishes the truth. It also denies other truths. Yellow journalism is also propaganda. It is to make one side look good and make the other side look like anything they want to. Let's uh, qualify that. I don't, don't agree with him because yellow journalism is there so that the publisher can get more money in his pocket through sensational stories. His agenda, his agenda may only be that or was that in the past now when you get a publisher that has an agenda along with political parties so other stories can be manipulated you don't have to sensationalize to brainwash anybody all you got to do is hide the truth and that's what the media is uh, the mainstream media is great at the alternative media is great at giving you more truth in a sense when you you're talking i'm talking from an educated point of view here not bright i'm not bright at all and I didn't like that term. You know, what is it, only smart people that figured this out? No. I'm just an average Joe that figured it out because that was my job. Mostly bad. Yellow journalism turned out to be very profitable, mm. particularly for people selling newspapers. At the time when the Hollywood industry rose up, its movie stars became see he agreed with me on that very popular all over the world the thing was that there were certain journalists like William Randolph Hearst and many others who learned that they could sell vast amounts of newspapers and even cause nationwide outrages by reporting stories on famous topics or famous people and embellishing the stories and invoking their own points of view on the story and even passing it off as being fact. Now Hollywood at the time started to develop television. 
And Hollywood realized that such a tactic could work very well for their media programs. Many vast corporations were behind the creation of television. Corporations who had investments with political government figures all over the world. Many of them designed television programs to promote a certain idea to... Now that's, you know, a lot of stuff here, what he's getting, look it, there is a bottom line to all these stories. TV funnels uh, money. Look at the, uh, look at sports. Before TV, these athletes didn't make anything. So there is a lot going on here. And much of, you know, there's a lot of things done without uh, political things involved here. I mean, we're talking about uh, things that trickle down, jobs that are created. There are numerous jobs created through this stuff. Now, we all know that we'd like to see a better media. We'd all, uh, alternative, uh, we all would like to see what you know, good people would like to see uh, their version of what would be a great mainstream media. They'd like to see their version of what is a great Hollywood. But the point is, the, the way it is today is the way it's going to be, and it serves a purpose that you have to figure out so that you can then put it aside and say, you know what, they can do what they want. It doesn't bother me one bit. But to think you're going to change this when they got billions of dollars, I mean, this is an enormous thing. Just and its tentacles spread deeply. I'm not saying change it. I'm saying look at it and benefit from it, even if you disagree. Because it can't serve a purpose. Because you're not going to understand the truth unless you listen to these, listen to what they're doing. And the problem is, is what he's saying is he thinks that uh, all people don't have the ability to figure this out. I think more people do and more people are. The point is we have to get to the point where we understand the problem and then we learn to live with it because these guys are in control for a reason. And if you think you can change Washington, if you think you can change Hollywood, if you think you can change the mainstream media, look, there are many great people before you that have tried I've watched journalists go down the drain, better ones than me. And it's the idealism sometimes in the hearts of people that stands in the way of them understanding the real truth. So we'll get back to our friend here. Reprogram people to give them predictive programming. This is why it's called television programming. It was literally to program the minds of the people through a subconscious, subliminal means. It was to inspire. The guilt behind television in regards to this is in its commercials. Most people will not believe that television brainwashes people, but yet they never understand the science of commercials. If television is not a brainwash tool, why do they spend billions of dollars on a total level with corporations on commercials. Why do corporations get together and spend billions of dollars on commercials? Because they know they're going to get billions and billions of dollars in return. Because they know that commercials are used to program your mind to buy You're listening to FirstAmendmentRadio.com worldwide. Freedom is never free. We need your support today at FirstAmendmentRadio.com. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on Internet or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, 
we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for Missionary Radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. Then, when you subscribe, we will send you the last quarterly MP3 CD of that program immediately and continue to do so with each new quarter. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host, cause, and anywhere else the Spirit may lead you. Do all to the glory of our God and Creator, for His holy nation, the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening. Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased, it has been stolen, there's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity, invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188. Okay, welcome back to the second half hour of the Investigative Journal on this November 9th, 2015 day on our calendar. And I wanted to mention, if you listen to my first half hour, I'm not trying to be antagonistic with this gentleman because he brings up some really good points about the media deception. All I was really trying to do was add some things to uh, add a different perspective and to give you a little bit of an insider's view of this. Because, as I said, when you work in something like the in the media, as long as I have and as many sides of it as I have, uh, you learn an awful lot about their tactics. And I thought we'd get back and let uh, Shield of the Sun talk a little more about media, what he calls just strictly media deception. The media are filled with people who think that it is their responsibility to change your way of thinking. They believe that it is their mission to help you to understand that they must convince you to follow ways that the Bible calls sin. The media has an agenda against Christianity. This is why this video is important. It's important to people who love truth, but for those who do not, well, you know you can always change the channel. But you see, the media, however, will be the ones to supply your visual entertainment, if you will. So there's truth and there's lies. Some people believe that channels like Shield of the Sun and many other positive channels, like Black Child or Fishers of Men and others, like KJ's channel, Scariest Movie Channel, and other channels I've done interviews on, that these channels here, according to the media, are filled with liars and haters and people who despise other people for their beliefs or for their sexuality or whatever it may be. They tend to fail to tell you, however, that all of us come from sinful backgrounds and that all of us struggle with sin. They fail to tell you, however, that this was never about bashing people or hating people, and we even express that to people. And I think I'd have to agree with them on that. There were some very good statements made. What it's about is a simple debate. Apparently, 
when you did, when you debate the media, the media turns around and tells those who debate against them that they are prejudiced or hateful or homophobic or unreasonable, backward in all the hateful statements that they love to make. And I want to say one thing. He's correct. But what did you expect? That's exactly what they're going to do. Because the question you just must ask them is, what am I doing to upset you so much? You have a job to do, and so do I. But when the media debates against other people, they come off as intelligent, as smart, as just stating an argument. But you see, they can do that because they can paint themselves any way they like to. While we, on the other hand, are not looking to paint pictures for you. We're not looking to do that. What we are looking to do is express the gifts that the Holy Spirit has given us to inform you of a teaching, of a fair argument, of a fair knowledge to those who simply would like to receive it. We have expressed our opinions fairly and honestly within the degree of the education and study we have been accessible to. The media does the same thing. It is the same tactic. It is simply called journalism. Some of us use our Holy Spirit gifts to initialize our journalism. The media has proven that they use yellow journalism. Yellow journalism has now become mainstream journalism. And you know, one thing on this is that one of the interesting things, I kind of, when I was listening to this, just thought about the unbelievable things I learned when I was working in this corrupted media, the mainstream media, not knowing it was corrupted, but I still had a sense that something was wrong, and I kept working. I kept asking questions. And what I'm saying is, even though I understood at certain points that things weren't right, without them, I would have never gotten to this point. And that's the real key. I don't think any of these people would, anybody who does. Uh, sure, we'd like to see a better, truthful uh, mainstream media. What, just surmise, what it would be like, and I'm not going to answer this, but just think, if they actually told the truth, what would happen to this world? I believe it would collapse the next day because it is built on lies. And most of the people that listen build their lives on them. And they can't. it can't all come crashing down in one day. And I guess the question is, can it? Meaning popular journalism. No matter what they present to you, you will always believe their side of it if you believe in their type of media. This is a sad world because Hitler even had a name for this, unfortunately. He called it his propaganda machine. Propaganda machine for Nazi Germany was all about yellow journalism. It was about promoting their beliefs and blasting and slanderizing, even outlawing other people's beliefs. The media was very controlled in that time, and unfortunately America, after World War II, took so much of the Nazi infrastructure into our own country that now we have this problem. We have the media, and along with a host of other problems that the media doesn't want to report on, and that the media wants to make you think this is all just a bunch of fantasy. They want you to think that things like what they call the alien agenda is all just a fantasy, when in truth it is not a fantasy. Many of us believe that this is the fallen angels, the satanic phenomenon, the 
unveiling of prophecy, what the Bible calls revelation. The media calls it fantasy. The media refuses to report on the harmful influences of Hollywood entertainment. They are promoting them and endorsing them to the world as people who have changed society for the better. There is nothing better about society. It's only getting worse. While these entertainers get rich and are credited for things they have not done. What they should be credited for is the harm that they have brought about. The media doesn't want you to know that violence influences you, that sexual pornography will influence you. Even scantily clad women, which is to say women not exactly naked, but letting it hang out, that can also influence you. They don't want you to know that their tactics alone in the way they present the news and in the way they speak the news and in the way they promote emotional outburst rather than logical debate and conversation is also bad for you as well because emotional outburst and emotionalism will then overshadow your logic and you'll never be able to see both sides of the story and then truly make a decision. The media is about their side of the story and not about the other side. Let's take this fact also very clearly. I'm not a person who believes in liberals and I'm not a person who believes in conservatives either. I believe in Jesus Christ and in just simply being what is called real. I'm just real about myself. I'm real about with other people. I just see us all as being in the same boat, needing the same God, and none of us are better than anybody else. That's how I see things. I have a wide range of views on things, just like everybody else does. So in any true, real debate and conversation, you should know that all sides would always be presented. But is that what you really get with the media? No, it's not what you get with the media. You get media entertainment, media news, entertainment to distract you, to detain you, and then brainwash you with stories that they have presented, with stories that they even crafted with stories that are done not to educate you, not to inform you, but to make you go to bed at night with one eye open and perhaps a gun in your dresser. It's to make you afraid. It's to make you very afraid. It's to make you not understand things correctly about what defense is, about what love is, about what hope is, about what goodness and righteousness, what Christianity is. So understand this, that I'm not for liberals or conservatives. But one thing is very clear. Hollywood is very liberal. They'll tell you that themselves. They, they're very proud about that. The people that they hire for their media program shows are also liberals. Very rarely are they conservatives. Even Fox News, who prides itself on being conservative, actually have a lot of liberals in them. In fact, there are many conservatives who work for Hollywood who actually act very liberal. There doesn't seem to be much of a difference in my eyes. But to understand it, the media, in regards to its members, are mostly liberals. Liberals today have an agenda to bash Christianity. It is a fact. And if you look at any of their agendas, rather if it be spiritual, rather if it be health, rather if it be government, rather if it be social structure, whatever it is, there's always an agenda in there to remove God, to remove the Bible, not to talk about Christianity. They make room for Islam, they make room for Buddhism, they make room for everything else. But Christianity is always removed. 
Liberals are actually being told now among each other to just simply make fun of Christians, to just bash them, to just make them look like they're prejudiced, like they're hateful, and to not respect their arguments or to even really listen to what they're saying, to not even research it, to not even apply what the courts of law would say is called the due process of law. There is no due process for Christians or no due process for Christian teachings. All of it, according to the media's agenda, is to just simply be made fun of. What is horrible about that is that that's exactly what satanic occult members, witchcraft occultists, and other New Age groups literally teach their followers to do, to make fun of Christians, to mock them, to tease them, to abuse them. We know that coven activity is the most brainwashed, psychopathic activity you can engage in to allow yourself to be manipulated by a leader and do all the sickening things that the leader wants you to do. They don't want to report this about what goes on in these types of religions. They want to take Christianity, which has been the foundation from the beginning, and no matter what they do or say, will always be the foundation, whether if they like it or not. You know, I let the gentleman speak on, and I, you know, he's, he's speaking now with his own belief system, and a lot of the things he says has a lot of validity. Uh, the thing about the alien, I didn't quite get. I don't believe in the alien agenda. I believe they're a concoction by the powers that be, uh, because I don't believe that aliens do exist, because the universe is not as it is as not as as it is as we're told. Uh, it's different, I believe. Uh, now, I'm not going to get in to his belief system as far as, is everybody mocking Christianity? Is the media's, are they targeting? I do, I do believe they target certain areas, but uh, what they're doing is using uh, using the media to target certain individual Christian groups, and I do do agree with that because no better way to look at it is the targeting of the Tony Alamo ministry that I covered, and showing that they've only given one side of the story. That's what I started to show out telling you. What I'm trying to do is to give them the other side of the story. And not it in an antagonistic way, telling the media, look, you did your job, but here, you missed some things. Let's see if they uh, will agree with that. Because as I go to them, I say, "What? Am I, why am I saying, I'm not being threatening to you. I'm helping you. I'm giving you some facts that you may have overlooked. Back to uh, Shield of the Sun. Remove it from you and think that somehow your lives will be better because of it. God has even allowed these wicked people to be in charge just so that evidence can be shown they are not improving anything. God right now is very much upset at this world, but he is filled with long-suffering and patience and love. I can tell you this. There are many Christians out there who often get it wrong. They can come off as very hateful, as very horrible. There are many Christians out there who got other problems, like being prejudiced, or being arrogant, or being ignorant. There are Christians with sexual problems, Christians who watch porn, Christians who have relationships outside of marriage, premarital, relationships there are Christians well I think basically here we get into this idea he's saying Christians they're not Christians if they're engaged in many of these things and he's not making the differentiation between uh, you know Catholicism most people think Catholicism is Christianity and they're surely given a nice uh, round of applause in the media aren't they so let's start Understanding it's bigger than just that saying Christianity. 
and there are Christians that do this. I say those they are not Christians if they're doing that. And I also say the Vatican is not a Christian organization. Christians who do drugs. There are Christians who still brawl and fight and snarl at people. There are Christians with extreme problems. There are Christians with low problems. The truth is, the Bible teaches the fact that Christians will be filled with problems. Oh. That's the point about Jesus Christ. Jesus died for them while they were still sinners. Remember this. Christians are the human race. Meaning, Christians are among the human race and will come from the human race. We are not different from the human race in regards to our physiology and our creation. We are different individuals. And, you know, that's fairly obvious to me. I don't think we need to, uh, you know, it's kind of like uh, sometimes when you sit through a, a law school uh, class, there's certain things that are said that you think you're back in kindergarten, you know, the teacher actually emphasizing things that you already know. We know that. Christianity, I mean, we all understand what it is. Uh, do we? Uh, is the question I say. We all think we do. And uh, the question is, each and every one of us has to answer the question, are you really a Christian? And many of us say that, but the, our fruits of our work don't back it up. And we are different by spiritual choice. What separates the people in the end the righteous and the wicked is going to be by the choices they made. Um. What we're trying to do is make better choices than the horrible choices we've been making our whole entire lives. What we are trying to do is be better than the media, to be better than the political field, to be better than the Pharisees of this world. We are trying to present to you what real Christianity is. It's presented to you by people God called, people who existed in some horrible, horrible circumstances, or maybe some broken circumstances. Whatever it was, at whatever time and place, no Christian is perfect. No Christian is expected to be on a pedestal. All of us are simply giving you a message from God. We do this because of the fact we want to do it. And the reason why we want to do it is because we believe in it. But I can tell you this, for a lot of us, we never expected to even be doing anything like this. If someone were to see me, say about 15 years ago, if I'd be doing something like this, I would never believe them if they told me. A lot of us have the same opinion. We found ourselves doing this because the situations had become far too bad, not just for our own sinful lives, but for the lives of the people all around us. Then God gave us his spirit, his message, his word to go out there and preach it to others. It helps us just as much as it helps all of you. It equally benefits us just as it equally benefits you. Because we are all the same. We have the same problems. We have the same enemy. But yet we have the same Savior and the same hope. All of us have to remember that there is a truth and there is deception. The media is deception. It's all about deception. I can tell you with full confidence, my, myself, and the preachers that I personally know, we have no agenda to hate homosexuals, or to hate unbelievers, or to hate pagan members, rather if they be Satanists, whether they be witches or whatever it is. No, we don't support your ways. Yes, 
us, we will always show from the word of God that your ways are sinful. But that does not mean we hate you. It does not mean we despise you. The truth of the matter is, even in your own crowds, you are among friends that you won't always agree with. But they're still your friend at the end of the day. At the end of the day, you still don't think you should throw them under a bus and see what kind of hell you can raise up for them in their lives. You just simply know. You know him, but you just don't agree with him. Okay, his final words were pretty good, and I have to agree with him on those those last couple statements made in the last minute or so. And he brought up some good points, and I hope that some of my uh, comments added to the understanding that uh, you know, we really got to figure this thing out. And uh, the only way we can do it is by complete understanding. And I hope you come back to the investigative journal. But I will understand if you miss some of my shows. So have a good evening and good night on the investigative journal.